the rain always had a way of bringing the shadows to life. On this particular night, it seemed more persistent, drumming rhythmically against my window pane as if trying to communicate in Morse code. The storm had escalated quickly, the sky turning a deep gray as the sun dipped below the horizon, leaving me with a sense of foreboding as I settled into my new home. The move had been sudden, a necessity driven by a quick job change, and the only available rental was this aging two-story Victorian on the edge of town. It was the kind of house that had character and bones that creaked, with a history whispered by the locals in hushed tones. I hadn't met my neighbor yet, a recluse by all accounts, whose dilapidated home was shrouded by overgrown weeping willows and thick ivy that clung to and nearly consumed its facade. As I unpacked, the lights flickered momentarily, a reminder of the home's age and the storm's might. I paused, listening to the rain's cadence, when a knock came at the door. Uneasy, I approached, not expecting visitors on such a stormy evening. Peering through the peephole, I saw nothing but the blurry outlines of the willows whipped around by the wind. Opening the door, I found no one there but a small, wrapped package on the doorstep, soaking wet from the rain. Puzzled, I brought it inside, examining the sodden brown paper. No note, no indication of the sender. Just a box, plain and somewhat heavy. Curiosity overcame my caution, and I tore it open to find an old, tarnished mirror, its surface speckled with age but clearly well-crafted. I set the mirror on the mantel, a chill running down my spine as I caught my reflection. It seemed to flicker in the dim light, or perhaps it was just my imagination, spurred by the storm and the shadows of my new, unfamiliar home. That night, as I lay in bed listening to the rain, a sense of unease grew. The mirror's presence in my home felt increasingly invasive, as if it was watching me, its old glass eyes knowing too much. Sleep was elusive, and when it finally came, it was fitful and filled with dreams of shadowy figures lurking in the corners of my vision, just beyond clear sight. The next morning, I met my neighbor. An elderly woman, she walked with a stooped back and a cane, her eyes sharp and piercing beneath thick, tangled brows. She introduced herself as Mrs. Whitaker. Her voice was raspy from age carrying a stern tone that seemed at odds with her frail appearance. Saw you got my package, she said, her eyes flicking past me to the mirror on the mantel. Why you sent it? I stammered, unsure what to make of her directness. Yes, she replied curtly. That mirror belonged to my sister. She lived in your house before you, died there too. Heart failure, they said, but I know better. Her words sent a shiver through me. Know better? What do you mean? Mrs. Whitaker leaned closer, her voice dropping to a whisper that mingled with the rustling of the leaves. That mirror, it shows more than reflections. Watch it at night during the storm. You'll see what I mean. Before I could ask more, she turned and shuffled back to her house, leaving me staring after her, the mirror's ominous presence now even more foreboding. That night, another storm brewed, as if on cue. The wind howled, and the rain beat a frantic tattoo against the windows. Remembering Mrs. Whitaker's words, I found myself drawn to the mirror. I watched, my heart pounding, as my reflection seemed to fade, replaced by another scene. It was my room, but not as it was, it was distorted, shadowy figures moving about, their motions jerky and unnatural. I stumbled back, gasping, my mind racing to make sense of the images. The figures seemed unaware of my presence, or perhaps they were indifferent. They moved with purpose, enacting some ritual that chilled me to the bone. The scene shifted, and suddenly, one of the figures turned, its eyes meeting mine through the plane of the mirror. 
A scream lodged in my throat as the figure seemed to reach towards me, its hand pressing against the glass. The lights flickered, then went out, plunging me into darkness. The sound of the rain intensified, drowning out everything else. I fumbled for my phone, the only source of light, its beam cutting through the darkness to the mirror. The scene was gone, my own panicked reflection staring back at me. But the terror had taken root. Each stormy night brought the same ritual, the figures returning, their actions more desperate, more terrifying. I couldn't bring myself to cover the mirror, I needed to understand, to know what was happening. The cycle continued, each storm revealing more of the ritual, the figure's desperation palpable. Their world was a shadow of mine, a reflection twisted by whatever haunted that mirror. And night by night, I felt it pulling at the edges of my sanity, the barrier between our worlds thinning, fraying like the nerves under my skin. Tonight, another storm rages, fiercer than before. The wind screams, a banshee's wail, and the rain beats a relentless assault against the house. I stand before the mirror once more, the figures already gathering, their ritual about to begin. But tonight is different. I can feel it. Something is coming, something from the depths of the mirror's dark glass. And as the first figure raises its hands, the others joining in, I brace myself. The boundary is breaking. I can feel it, the cold seeping through, the shadows reaching. And as I watch, powerless, the figure that once pressed against the glass steps through, its form solidifying in the storm's furious energy. The air in the room thickened as the figure stepped through the mirror, its form more grotesque and twisted in the dim light of my phone. My breath caught in my throat, my body frozen in terror. The creature was undeniably human-like, but draped in shadows that seemed woven into its very essence. Its eyes, if they could be called that, were deep, dark voids that seemed to pull at the very light surrounding them. I backed away slowly, my phone's light trembling along with my hands. The creature's head cocked to the side, a jerky, unnatural movement, as if it was not used to the physicality of this world. A low moan escaped it, a sound so sorrowful and haunting that it seemed to echo through the chambers of my soul. Who are you? I managed to whisper, my voice barely carrying over the storm that raged outside. It moved closer, its movements hesitant. When it spoke, its voice was a chorus of whispers, an amalgam of tones both male and female, old and young. We are the forgotten, the souls trapped within the glass, bound by old magic and older malice. I stumbled backwards, my spine hitting the cold wall. The room felt smaller, the walls inching closer, as if breathing in time with this apparition. What do you want from me? I asked, my voice gaining a bit of strength as I pushed against the fear. To be free, it whispered, the voices melding into a single, desperate plea. To live again, to feel the sun and the rain not through glass but skin. I shook my head, trying to understand. How? The mirror, it is a prison. Break it, and you break the chains that bind us here. Its hand, a mere wisp of darkness, pointed to the tarnished mirror hanging ominously on the wall. Break the mirror? I echoed, unsure. The thought of unleashing whatever else might be contained within that glass sent new shivers down my spine. The creature nodded, its form flickering like a flame in a draft. Please, before the storm ends and we are pulled back into the abyss. I hesitated, my gaze flitting between the mirror and the creature. The storm continued to howl outside, a reminder of the chaos that had brought this nightmare into my home. With each passing second, I could feel the air grow colder, the darkness deeper. Taking a deep breath, 
I approached the mirror, the creature's many-eyed gaze following every step. My hand reached for a candlestick on the mantel, its weight comforting in my hand. Just as I lifted the candlestick, ready to strike, a violent gust of wind burst through the window, throwing rain and debris into the room. The mirror's surface rippled as if struck by an invisible force, and the creature screamed, a sound so terrifying and pain that it froze me in place. The figures in the mirror, the shadowy remnants of its ritualistic companions, began to emerge, crawling forth with a desperation that was palpable. They reached out with their shadowy hands, pleading, as they too stepped into the room, their forms stabilizing in the earthly realm. The room was now crowded with these specters, each one as hauntingly beautiful as they were terrifying. They moved around me, their touches cold, their whispers like the wind. Hurry, they urged, their voices a haunting melody. The storm wanes. With renewed urgency, I swung the candlestick. It connected with the mirror with a satisfying crash, shattering the glass into a thousand pieces. The reaction was instantaneous. A blinding light filled the room, and the howling of the wind reached a feverish pitch. The creatures began to dissolve, their forms becoming less distinct, their edges blurring into the air itself. They smiled, those that could, their expressions filled with a peace that had eluded them for so long. Thank you, they whispered, their voices fading like the end of a song. One by one, they disappeared, their release evident in the lightning of the air, the sudden calm that fell like a blanket over the room. But as the last of the figures vanished, the creature that had first stepped through the mirror lingered. It stood before me, its form more solid than before, its dark eyes now a deep, piercing blue. You have freed them, it said, its voice no longer a whisper but clear and strong. But I must stay. The curse of the mirror was tied to my soul, my punishment for a long forgotten sin. I stared at it, the realization of what I had done, and what I had unleashed, settling in. What are you? I asked, not sure I wanted to know the answer. I was once like you, a seeker of truths better left hidden. Now, I remain as a guardian, to ensure that the horrors of the past are not repeated. The rain had stopped, the storm passing as suddenly as it had arrived. The creature, no, the guardian, looked up the window, its gaze distant. Be wary, seeker. Some truths are too heavy for one soul to bear. With those final words, it faded from view, leaving me alone in the suddenly quiet house. The broken mirror lay scattered on the floor, each shard reflecting only the mundane room around it. I sank to the floor, overwhelmed by the night's events, the silence of the house pressing in on me. Outside, the first light of dawn began to erase the shadows of the night, a new day dawning, fresh and clear. But the peace I felt was tentative, the knowledge that the guardian remained nearby a constant reminder of the thin veil between this world and the next. And as I watched the sunrise, I knew that my encounter with the supernatural was far from over. The mirror was broken, but its legacy would live on, in the shadows, in the rain, in the whispers of the wind. And so, the cycle would continue, a story unfolding with each storm, each knock on the door, each flicker in the night. As the days passed, the weight of the event settled heavily upon me. The Guardian's final words echoed in my mind, a constant reminder that the barrier between the known and the unknown was thinner than I had ever imagined. Yet life, as it invariably does, continued on its unrelenting pace. The storm had passed, and the house, with its shattered mirror and the secrets it had unveiled, seemed to settle into a quieter routine. However, peace was a fleeting guest. Each night, as I lay in bed, the silence of the house seemed oppressive, as if it were holding its breath. 
The remnants of the broken mirror had been cleared away, but its ghost lingered in the form of cold spots and faint whispers that danced just at the edge of hearing. The presence of the guardian, unseen but deeply felt, was a constant shadow at the periphery of my vision, a chill that traced the spine with icy fingers. Hashtag 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 the return of Mrs. Whitaker one crisp morning, as Autumn painted the world in hues of gold and red, Mrs. Whitaker returned. She found me in the garden, attempting to bring some order to the chaos left by the storm. I see you've been busy, she remarked, leaning on her cane as she surveyed the garden with keen eyes. Yes, I replied, standing to face her, trying to at least. She nodded, her eyes sharp. And the mirror? I noticed the rubbish bin outside seemed quite full. It's gone, I said, the memory of that night sending a shiver through me despite the morning sun. Good, she replied, her voice carrying an odd note of relief. That mirror, it was a dark thing. Held too much sorrow, too much pain. I hesitated, then asked, the creatures, the guardian, what will happen to them now? Mrs. Whitaker sighed, a sound that seemed to carry with it the weight of many years. They're free now, at least the ones you saw. But the guardian, He's bound to this place, to the duty he was cursed with. He'll watch over it, ensure that the darkness doesn't seep back into our world. And what about me? I asked. Am I to just continue living here, with a guardian I can't see but can feel? That's up to you, she replied. This house, it's old, filled with memories and spirits. But it's also a home. You can give it a new life, fill it with new memories. Or you can leave, find somewhere less, burdened. I considered her words, the choice looming large. The thought of leaving was tempting, to put distance between myself and the nightmarish events I had endured. But there was something else, a sense of duty that the guardian's presence instilled in me. This house, with all its shadows and whispers, needed someone to care for it, to keep the memories alive and the darkness at bay. Hashtag 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 a new beginning I chose to stay. It wasn't an easy decision, nor was it one that brought complete peace. But with each day, the house felt more like a home. I made changes, small at first, repainting walls, planting new flowers in the garden. And with each change, the oppressive atmosphere lifted a little more, the whispers grew quieter, and the chill that had once permeated the rooms warmed slightly. Mrs. Whitaker became a frequent visitor, her visits often filled with stories of the town's history and her own life. Her stories painted a picture of a community tightly knit by shared secrets and experiences, a place where the past was always present, but not always fearsome. And slowly, I became a part of that community. My house, once a source of fear and mystery, began to feel like a beacon, a place of history and healing rather than horror. I hosted gatherings, invited neighbors over, shared stories of the house's past while creating new memories. Hashtag 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 the Guardian's peace nights were still hard. Sometimes, when storms rolled in and the rain drummed against the windows like it had that first night, I would feel the echo of old fears creeping in. But they were just echoes now, fading into the warmth of my home, the laughter of my friends, the knowledge that I was not alone. The guardian, whose presence had once been so chilling, seemed to find peace in the new life the house held. I could still feel him occasionally, a watchful eye in the stillness of the night, but it was no longer a menacing presence. It was a comforting one, a reminder that the darkness had been held at bay, and would continue to be so as long as someone kept the light burning. Hashtag 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 an unbroken cycle the true story of the house and the mirror became a favorite tale among my friends, a ghost story of sorts to be told and retold, 
especially on stormy nights. It was a story of darkness and light, of fear and courage, of the past and the future. It was our story now, part of the fabric of the house and the community. And as I sit here, writing this final entry in my journal, the rain begins to fall again. It's a gentle rain, soothing, it sounds a comforting murmur against the roof. I look around my home, filled with light and life, and I realize that while the story of the mirror ended, the story of the house continues. And perhaps, one day, I'll pass on the story to the next keeper of the house, ensuring that the legacy of light continues to shine, keeping the shadows at bay, embracing the rain not as a harbinger of darkness, but as a cleanser, a renewer of life and hope. So, the cycle continues, unbroken, the whispers in the rain a melody now, not a mournful dirge. And in this melody, I find peace, a deep, enduring peace that tells me, no matter the darkness, there will always be light. And in this house, in this community, under the watchful eye of the guardian, that light will never fade.